DCM distribution and channel management an imperative course that creates an opportunity to understand the dynamics of how the market works how the channel operates what are the what are the fundamentals of the distribution and how the distribution operates uh, in the real life setting uh, which becomes very applicable and apparent uh, to understand the importance of the market how the market operates for the FMCG uh, and the non FMCG industries as well like pharmaceutical like lubricants and uh, telco fashion apparel and so and so forth there is another concept which is very important to understand we should be able to know the difference between uh, availability and the logistics we should know the what is distribution and what is uh, logistic with the difference between dcm distribution and channel management and scm supply chain management how uh, it is distinctive yet it is complementing the element of trade marketing and shopper marketing uh so that 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 whole each and everything needs to be clarified to understand the essence of uh DCM in uh throughout the journey uh and the trajectory uh where the student uh covers what the student actually covers and exactly moving forward we also understand the difference of RTM how many kinds of RTMs are there and uh, the difference between what is a distributor what is a sub distributor how is it different uh, to have a handling agent what is a what is the role of a central warehouse what is the role of a uh, stocking point every single thing and it all works in a consolidated it all works in a unified fashion also uh, as we have also uh, explored about uh, the mid-sized distributors and the sole distributors few of the companies prefer to have one single distributor uh, for example here in pakistan sir uh, is having a one single distributor which is ibl international brands limited uh, who is also a distributor for pringles uh, ferrero rocher uh, kellogg's and for png procter and gamble the sole distributor in pakistan is abu daud uh all right etco abu dhabi trading company and uh, a lot of companies who prefer not to go for the sole distributor but they go for the mid side distributor for their respective territories for example engro foods feasant campina is having four to five distributors only in karachi overall in pakistan that goes around 50 unilever only in karachi the distributors are around more than 30 35 our national foods uh, distributors in karachi are around 9 to 10 and they are also having a dedicated distributor for the modern trade as well these are called mid side distributor that every distributor is having a dedicated area one will going to look after uh, johor and gulshan one will going to look after north karachi and north nazarbad and federal area other one will going to look after baldi and orangi another one will going, going to look out look after a dh and clifton and they are responsible to operate within their within their territory they can't transcend and they can't go to another territory because that will going to be considered as the territory crossover which is a crime in sales in channel in distribution so a uh, boundaries which has been crafted which has been designed the distributor needs to operate within that boundary okay that's how you principally operate because if you start strong shipping and transcending and crossing over the territory and going into some other territory which is not designed and not prescribed for you so definitely the hygiene of the business will going to compromise the sales and uh, the sanity of the operations will going to be obstructed which should not be the case along with that ladies and gentlemen it's very important and imperative to understand the types of distribution distribution models what are the types of distribution models so there are multiple types on which these distribution operates all right mid size and sole distribution are the uh, are the categories but the type of distribution model when we talk about distribution model which means how exactly these distribution operates with the principal principal means the company for example abu daud is a distributor png is the principal all right uh, npd is the distributor uh, unilever is the principal muller philips muller phips mnp is the distributor unilever is the principal all right so that 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 needs to have a, uh, have uh, a crystallized understanding moving forward ladies and gentlemen 
let me give you an understanding of what exactly the types of distribution models are what exactly distribution models are so here even in pakistan even in europe even across the world uh keeping the business in consideration business scope in consideration the category in which the operating and the territory in which the company is operating the channel in which the company is operating uh the business size what the distribution is having uh that all these uh, elements define the distribution model okay all right so let me tell you first one one number one which is the most common one that's called cost plus model which is also known as absolute model in few of the instances it is also known as a margin model so cost plus model app model margin model all are the same what exactly it is in cost plus model the distribution will going to have a margin uh that's what we call the distribution margin uh from which means purchasing on invoice price and selling on trade price all right so that the spread of it will going to be considered as the margin for the distributor so distribution operates on that particular margin no extra benefit is given from the principal from the company distribution has to operate and manage all the expenses in every single element of the distribution operation within that margin so in pakistan shan foods is actually operating on cost plus model which is also known as margin model abu daud is operating on cost plus model uh, they are doing every single thing and all the distributions of abu daud shan predominantly for example are managing within that spread of margin of distribution margin they are purchasing on invoice price and selling it on trade price all right so whatever the benefit they are getting they are getting uh within that margin moving forward ladies and gentlemen there is another model that's called cost sharing model cost sharing model means for example the company will going to share the 50% cost uh 50% salaries of uh the order booker all right that's one example or for example uh the distribution uh has been requested by the company to induct more vans which means inducting more vans means uh, adding new outlets adding new outlets means that you need to add new more sales force so, um, order booker uh, driver loader uh salesman all right so you need to have a dedicated fleet then after the analysis you realize the distribution realize that a lot of profit can't be operated and roi will going to be negative because the area is new and that will going to need a little bit time for the development till the time the area will going to be positive and will going to reap a benefits in the roi as well so what's going to happen till then the best thing that I, in, in in such situation will going to be that company will going to say all right for the first 6 months we will going to bear the cost of the van so if the cost of the van is like uh, 100000 rupees so we will going to bear 100000 rupees initially for the first month for the second third fourth then fifth we will going to bear 50% of the operation cost for that van all right so that's also example of cost sharing model in that way usually when the new brand is inducted or the new territory is explored so in that situation the company prefers to share the load share the cost of a distribution because that creates a better relation with the tra- with, with with the distributor not only with the with a better relation with the distributor but also increase the confidence of the distributor that the company is behind you they are there to support you and even if the new brand is example national foods achar category all right or the mondelez is going with their new uh, category of chewing gum and the market is not ready for that and you want to induct a dedicated van for that uh, so in that particular situation uh, the company will going to fund will going to give will going to share uh, the cost of the van and also in majority of the cases for example engro foods i remember that uh, the 50% of the salary is shared by the company for the order bookers so whatever the salary of order booker they, they will going to earn 50% will going to bear by the company okay now another example because uh, uh, the cost sharing model uh, national foods national food is also having a fixed roi 1.75 that's the fixed roi uh, and the company ensures that the distributor will going to earn it all right so that's that's the that's an example of share uh, cost sharing model 
For Mondelez, there's I'd like to tell over here that Mondelez is having a one distributor in, in Karachi. That's Premier Distribution. However, that distribution is having five to seven uh, stocking points over here, five to seven depots. And every depot is having a different sales force because every depot operates in a different territory. And despite of the fact that all the seven depots are of one single distributor, still the rules of transshipment and the territory crossover will going to be applicable over here as well. Why? Because despite of the fact that that one distributor is having seven different uh, depots in seven different distinctive location. So every depot will going to have a different sales force, which will going to have their own dedicated targets and they have to qualify for the KPIs. All right. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, there is another concept that's what we call the hybrid model, which is a new model. Uh, comparatively, the first two that I have just explained to all of you hybrid model in hybrid model. What happens that, for example, our logistic partner, let me take the name of few TCS is not a distribution it's a logistic partner and uh, PTN logistic partner, uh, leopard courier logistic partner, uh, there are a lot of other names as well. All right. BSL logistic partner. What happens that the company conducts a meeting with the logistic partner and states that you have the funds, you have the financial capital, but you don't have the expertise of distribution. You may be an expert into logistics, but you don't know how to make the product available in the market. No issues. You set up the distribution setup. You create a distribution setup and our sales team, our RSM, our ASM, our territory manager will going to help you out in conducting the operations for the distribution. Coca-Cola tried this, 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 this attempt with partnering with TCS for their area of Kurangi. They did that. So when your logistic partner turned out to become your distribution partner, this is what we call a hybrid model. This is what we call a hybrid model. Uh, Every model is not applicable uh, for every company, for every category, for every territory. And there is a possibility as well that in one country and in one city, in fact, two distributions are operating on cost plus one is operating on cost sharing and three are operating on and on hybrid model. There is a possibility for that. So there is no one short answer to any of the problem. Every problem needs to be treated in its own unique way. We need to have different strokes for different folks. So every single problem, every single issue and every single opportunity needs to be tapped in its own unique way. Ladies and gentlemen, moving forward for the fourth one, which is the final one that's called the dealer model. Dealer model is one of the most imperative and the most effective distribution models among all of them. All of them are effective, but this is something that I feel will going to bring distribution and the company on the same page with the with the KPI of achievement for the target for the primary and secondary, which is important for the distribution and the company as well, which is like a bread and butter for the company. If the targets are not met, uh, if targets are not met, things will going to be things will not going to go well. Targets are the religion for the sales targets are the religion for the channel, for the category, for the brand, for the marketing, for the sales, for everyone in the company all right we work to attain the target we work to deliver the top line so that we can achieve a beautiful bottom line that's how it is the green bottom line that's how it is ladies and gentlemen dealer model what exactly dealer model is a dealer model in Pakistan a lot of companies are operating few of them I would like to take the name of Friesen Campina Anglo Pakistan and Halal Foods in dealer model the KPIs for the distribution will going to be the similar than that of the company. So the KPIs are the same, which will going to be followed by RSM, NSM, ASM, TSM, the whole sales uh, 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 structure, the whole sales organization, even the order booker. So all of them have to qualify for the target to deliver the outer productivity, to deliver the call productivity, ensure the strike. Uh, rate is sustained every single day. The bills are appropriately done. The drop size is maintained. Uh, the line per order or that's what we call SKU per bill is sufficient and attained as per the prescribed target, which has been given. All these KPIs, ladies and gentlemen, will going to be a KPI of distribution as well. So if the distribution will going to fulfill these KPI. He will going to qualify for the insets. That's how it is. So in that way, when you when you align the KPI of your business partner along with your own business philosophy, 
the partner and the principal works together for a similar goal for a similar direction for a similar attainment in that way you create a better relation with your business partner because both the parties are on the same page and talking in a similar language the culture which has been crafted in this way it's brilliant however the precaution or should i say the prerequisite of going for the dealer model it is that your distribution needs to be mature enough to understand your company to understand your business and to understand the possibilities of growth and expansion because until and unless the distribution is not mature enough doesn't have the sense of doing the operations and the business doesn't know how the category operates doesn't know the dynamics of the marketing this model will not going to work in that situation also one more thing is also suggested that ideally the distribution should operate through the cost sharing model or uh, uh, a margin model if you see and if you observe with the passage of time your distribution has has turned out to be a mature one partner with the distribution make him a catalyst make him a business partner and start initiating a deal through the dealer model distribution through the dealer distribution model and that's going to be the most effective one ladies and gentlemen this is an imperative this is an important uh uh mini lecture that i have just imparted uh to all of you and remember that every distribution is unique all four of them cost plus model cost sharing model hybrid model dealer model all four are important all four are imp uh, imperative however it all depends upon upon where the company is working in which market in which territory the distribution is operating what are the dynamics of the distribution over there and what are uh the principles of the category in which the distribution will going to operate in that but in that particular category all these uh, uh, uh principles and all these features needs to be considered before opting the distribution model thank you